In this video we have chance to take a closer look to GDTEC Q1 Pro. This printer is new and at the moment I am recording the video, it's not out yet. No one has reviewed it and I simply don't know anything about this printer. So I don't have any influence from the people opinions of the printer and also GDTEC hasn't told me what to say in this video. Everything you see and hear is my honest opinion. So better let's get started, there is a lot to discover. After unboxing I saw the first time how the printer even looked like. And I have to say, I was a bit surprised. I was expecting something a little bit prettier. You know, printers nowadays not only go faster, they also look insanely good. This is something GDTEC has done for years. Their previous models look really unique and cool in their own way. But this one for sure is a little step back. But don't judge the book by the cover, this is just a look and at the end of the day it doesn't matter at all. To figure out what this printer has to offer, I loaded in some PLA and started the test print. Which is the classic Benji boat. Only thing I got informed is that the printer is high speed and they claim to print the Benji boat in only 16 minutes. So for sure we start with this. And it seems to be the case because this print took only 16 minutes and the Benji boat looks one of the best ones I have ever printed in my life. After this successful print I decided to print another test print that comes with the printer. And this one is some type of castle and it took me 4 hours to print. The last print was so fast that I actually didn't notice how quiet the printer was. By the way this is something that matters to me. If the printer is too loud I start avoiding printing with it because it just annoys me. This one is probably quieter than Bambi Lab X1. This means it's not silent that you barely hear it, but as a high speed printer it's really good. And by the way this printer also poops and wipes before the print. <laughs> like a bamboo lab, but Q1 has a little box there where it actually can be stored. When it's full it's easy to remove and you can empty it without any problem. But now the castle is ready and it's again really well done. I don't see anything to complain about and that's why I'm quitting PLA. If I keep printing with PLA then the whole video is exactly the same story. Oh it's so beautiful, it looks so great, you know it's getting boring. GDTEC printers including this one can print all materials. In my opinion GDTEC printers are not for BLA. I, I mean they can do it and like we saw they can do it really well. But the main reason why you buy GDTEC printer is to unlock different type of filaments. You can print like ABS, ASA, nylon and different type of carbon filaments. This printer can print at 350 degrees celsius. This is really close to peak printing temperature, which is for sure one of the craziest filaments ever. Sadly I don't have any so I cannot test can it actually do it. And by the way GDTEC don't claim that it, this printer can do it, I, w I was just uh, thinking maybe, you know. Also this printer has active chamber heating, which rapidly increases the chances of success printing ABS or nylon. ABS biggest problems are layer separation, warping and it doesn't really love to stick on the boil plate. After all those prints I feel like I am printing with PLA. After all those prints I didn't have any slightest warping or layer separation and every single print stick to the boil plate flawlessly and be noted I didn't use any glue stick. Even though one glue stick came with the printer which is complete waste because it's just not needed. And after all this those ABS prints looks beautiful. For my previous video I printed two stay centrifugal compressor. I already used this printer and printed those grey body parts with this printer. I didn't show the printer in this video because it was not out yet and I was not allowed to do it. But why I'm saying this is because those parts required extreme clearances, which are good tests for accuracy. And it succeeded hard. If you don't believe me, just watch my last video. Ok, now is March 20 and it's a big day because today the printer just got released and for the first time I can see how much this printer cost. And I was shocked. This printer cost less than $500. This is insane. Like I honestly don't see any reason to not buy this printer. I am not trying to be unfair to the other printer companies, but this performance at this price range is really really hard to beat. And at the same time it's a high speed printer. I did bunch of ABS prints and no question about this. This printer is ABS king. So I moved on to carbon fiber and nylon. Meanwhile the printer is printing at the background, I'm going to do a quick rundown over the specs of this printer. 
this printer nozzle goes up to 350 degrees Celsius, active chamber heating up to 60 degrees and print bed up to 120 degrees. This simply means you can print every material with this printer. This printer has Wi-Fi to transfer your G-code to the printer by the air. Or you can monitor the print and printer live in the GDX slicer. Also this printer has a little camera, what makes the monitoring the prints even more pleasant. Also in your smartphone if you are not in home. Like most of the printers nowadays, it also has filament runout sensor. And filament tangle detection. This is something I haven't seen before. Sadly I had no chance to test this because this just didn't happen to me. The automatic bed leveling works well in this printer. This is something GDTech have done really well before also. But this printer bed leveling is absolutely perfect. After unboxing the printer, it's ready to use in 3 minutes. You don't have to do any assembly, just remove the protection material and you're good to go. Something I wanna point out is the filament holder. At first I was looking this is the weirdest and ugliest spot to place the filament. But it's 10 times better than placing the filament behind the printer. It's just more comfortable to load and unload the filament. So I ended up liking this filament holder. And the interface. Overall it's simple to use and navigate around the menu. But at some point it's laggy. When I tried to find the G-code I wanna print, I had to wait when the thumbnails load up, then I can go to the next page. And so on and so on. I think it will be fixed in upcoming software updates, but for now it is like this. One thing I don't like, this is actually not about the printer, but about the GDTech newer printers overall. They have lost one small feature that I loved. They had turn on or off button at the front of the printer, which also enabled for a setting called power off the printer when the print is finished. They have removed the feature on their newer models, and I don't like this at all. It's not a big thing, but I personally miss this little button. My carbon fiber nylon prints are ready now. The benchy boats I printed doesn't look the best, let's be real. The blobs around the model ruin it. I was thinking that my filament is wet, which shouldn't be because my filament is dried after every use and stored properly. But still I took another spool of carbon fiber nylon and printed the exact same model again. And they look exactly the same. So the filament was not the issue over here. I messed around with the settings and I did get some better result, but it's still not perfect. The blobs are mostly gone, but not overhangs. They don't look good at all. I have used this printer for a month now and I think I have enough experience to say what I truly think about this printer. If I have only this printer, I mean more than one of course, then I don't need any other printer. Because I can do everything I need, print every material I ever need, having reasonable build volume and after all this it can do everything extremely well. But still it's not perfect. Like I cannot print multiple colors or material at the same time. Which is actually a thing that can be extremely useful when printing materials like nylon. Because you want to print supports with a different material. I give this printer 8.5 out of 10. This printer is not perfect. There is some things that are missing and some things can be a bit better, like lag interface. But still it's extremely good printer that I can recommend for everybody. I hope you now know about this printer a bit more and if you are interested, you find more information about this printer down below. Thank you for watching and bye.